please listen to the call to worship. Holy God, we come together to worship, a people who would like to think that we love you with all our hearts and souls, with all our might, but there are so many other things in our lives that clamor for our attention, that we often relegate you to just Sundays and times when we want you to rescue us. Most of us really do want you to be the one in whom we live and move and have our being. We really do want to hear your voice above all the other voices in our lives, God, but we get bogged down in the daily routine. We forget who you are. We forget who we are. We forget that the church is what the church is supposed to be. So here we are, standing before you today with our human foibles and our short attention spans, asking that you would make yourself known to us, that you would help us to recognize the presence of the holy, that you would continue to challenge us, inspire us, and make us into the people you want us to be. Amen. Amen. Let us sing, Come All Christians, DK. pray with me. God, we do love you more than any other. You are the reason we gather here today in community to praise you and worship you with everything we have to give. Please be with us today as we journey through the scriptures that will guide us to a place where we can love ourselves enough to take care of ourselves. Teach us, O oh Lord, to have enough self-love to then be able to love you with our hearts, our minds, and our souls. We love you, Lord. Amen. We're going to be entering into a time now where we share with God. You're going to hear a few scenarios about how we can share with God, how people share with God, and then we'll talk about that after we hear the scenarios. Ugh, I don't have time to stop for lunch again today. I've got to get these posters done for the sale. There's still so much work to do yet. Not sure if I'll even be able to get supper on the table. Oh well. Guess we'll do fast food drive through again. I wish I didn't feel so overwhelmed. I could ask the team for help, but frankly, it's, much too, it's too much work to explain to them how to do the posters correctly. There is a certain way that they look better, I guess. Mondays are really hard. I have to go back to work, and the stress is just incredible. By Sunday evening, I'm snapping at my wife, and everything I felt, all the good feelings from church just disappear. And then I know the next morning I'll be thrust into a scene where there is no place for Jesus. My co-workers have been chatting about stuff lately that's really kind of trashy, and I find myself being 
sucked into it, listening in and laughing at the vulgarity. I wish I could go to church every day. Maybe then I wouldn't have to listen in. <sighs> you know, I've been married a long time, God, over 40 years. Now he needs care, more than I bargained for. Sometimes I wish he'd just go away or just stop talking. I'm tired of caring for him, just tired and, and worried and scared and just not at peace. And I know I shouldn't feel this way. And I don't really mean it. I love him. But I really didn't expect my life to end up like this. And I'm just ready for a break. I'm sorry, God. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. There are times, friends, in our lives when we just encounter the road we encounter a block. We encounter things that are so difficult that it's hard to think about Jesus. And in those times when it's hard to remember that Jesus is in our lives, that Jesus is with us, it is hard. We have to know, somehow we have to know that God's grace is there. God's grace has us. And if we can't remember, we turn to each other to get that assurance that God's grace is there. Because it is, friends, I'm here to assure you that by his grace, all those things that we forget and that we want to do and that we can't do sometimes, by his grace, we are forgiven and redeemed. Amen. will be reading from Mark 12, 28 to 34. This is from the New Revised Standard Version, updated edition. The First Commandment. One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another. And seeing that he answered them well, he asked him, which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, the first is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Then the scribe said to him, you are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one and besides him there is no other. And to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding and with all the strength and to love one's neighbor as oneself, this is much more important than all the, excuse me, this is much more important than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. After that, no one dared to ask him any question. Now this scripture in Exodus begins with Moses' father-in-law, Jethro, who comes for a visit. And he and Moses exchanged some stories and Moses told Jethro how God had led the Israelites out of slavery. Exodus 18, 13 to 27. Listen for what happens to Moses, okay? Listen to what happens for Moses. The next day, Moses sat as judge for the people while the people stood around him from morning until evening. When Moses' father-in-law saw all that he was doing for the people, he said, what is this that you are doing for the people? Why do you sit alone while all the people stand around you from morning till evening? Moses said to his father-in-law, Because the people come to me to inquire of God. 
When they have a dispute, they come to me, and I decide between one person and another, and I make known to them the statutes and instructions of God. Moses' father-in-law said to him, What you're doing is not good. You will surely wear yourself out, both you and these people with you, for the task is too heavy for you. You cannot do it alone. Now listen to me. I will give you counsel, and God will be with you. You should represent the people before God and bring their cases to God. Teach them the statutes and instructions and make known to them the way they are to go and the things they are to do. You should also look for men among the people, men who fear God, are trustworthy, and hate dishonest gain. Set them as officers over thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens. Let them sit as judges for the people at all times. Let them bring every important case to you, but decide every minor case to themselves. So it's going to be easier for you, and they will bear the burden with you. If you do this, and God so commands you, then you will be able to endure, and all these people will go to their homes in peace. So Moses listened to his father-in-law and did all that he had said. Moses chose able men from all Israel and appointed them as heads over the people, as officers over the thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens. And they judged the people at all times. Hard cases they brought to Moses, but any minor cases they decided themselves. Then Moses let his father-in-law depart, and he went off to his own country. The word of the Lord. Did you know that according to the World Health Organization, burnout, burnout has become an official clinical syndrome? Seriously, it has. Burnout. Burnout now appears in the ICD, that's the International Classification of Diseases Handbook on problems related to employment and unemployment. According to the handbook, doctors can diagnose someone with burnout if they meet the symptoms. Now Moses fit the criteria for burnout. When his father-in-law found him, he saw it right away. He was exhausted. He had depleted his resources and had no time to rest. Now Jethro reminded him that God wasn't asking him to sacrifice himself to get the job done. God was just asking him to get the job done. So asking for help fit the situation for Moses. Helpers were gathered and the conditions were greatly improved for Moses and for everyone. His stress level went way down. And when it went way down, he could perform his function even better than he had before. Today, friends, chronic stress threatens millions of Americans. Some chronic stress is related to employment and other times it isn't at all. For workers, they might face long hours, difficult work situations, travel away from family, hard people to deal with, and very little time for rest. Now, our society and culture stresses busyness as the norm. Time off is frowned upon. Climbing the ladder of success and getting ahead are the drivers. Now, technology keeps us constantly connected and occupied, which is not always a good thing. We can get our emails, our texts, and instant messages just like that in an instant. So we're always plugged in. We're always on call. And if you happen to be the caregiver of a child, a spouse, or an aging parent, well, let's just add a bunch more stress. Or if we have a loved one with mental illness, or if we have a loved one with a physical illness, or chronic health condition, this makes caregiving even harder and more taxing. But what are we to do as a society that drives us toward the ever-moving hamster wheel, where leisure is viewed as laziness and vacations are a benefit instead of a necessity. You add all this up and what do you get? We are tired. We're tired. So to the rescue comes the self-care movement. And self-care can be defined as being mindful of your own limits and needs so you can ensure your own physical, emotional, and mental well-being. The self-care movement likes to emphasize ways to develop our personal habits and practices that help a person to manage stress and maybe reduce anxiety. Here's some strategies that they use, which is they're all smart. Exercising every day, eating a healthy diet, investing in a hobby, reading a book just for fun, prioritizing me time, developing self-soothing strategies for when anxiety hits, Learning to reach out to a friend when you need an ear. These are all great things. And the self-care movement is grounded in the assumption that the power for healing and rest lies within us. That we have the power to care for ourselves if we can learn a few helpful hints. So, help 
helpful hint of the day I need your help with. So tell me, how much do you think this glass of water weighs? Remember to think about the glass and the water. Okay, how much do you think it weighs? Take a guess. It's real. Two pounds. Okay, that's a good guess. What else do you think? Take a guess. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. One pound. One and a half pounds. Fourteen ounces. Ten ounces. Okay. What else? Come on, you engineers. What do you think? Eight ounces. Okay, how about you? Three pounds. Three pounds. Whoa. Glass two. Glass two. Glass two. This is a glass too. So if you want to change your pin, you can change your mind. You can. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Jackie. I say eight. You say eight. Okay. What else? Anything else? Come on, y'all. Give me an idea. Okay. We heard one and a half pounds. We heard two pounds. What else? Tom, you want to guess? No, not an engineer. Not an engineer. <laughs> hold it and see what it feels like. Just hold it. A thousand milligrams. Oh. <laughs> So much for a sermon illustration using my husband, right? There you go. There you go. Well, here we go. This is what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to weigh it. You have to come, you have to come up here and look because, you know, he's going to be the uh, verify. verify. Okay. What is it? One pound. Four ounces. Yep. One pound, four ounces. Who was the closest? Bob, right? Bob was the closest. So Bob gets a prize. <laughs> Look at that. You never know what's going to happen in sermons, right? Eat in Don't eat in church. There you go. So one pound, four ounces. Well, you know, friends, this is kind of interesting because it doesn't really matter what the absolute weight is. I guess it really doesn't. What matters is how long you hold it. If I hold it for a minute, I'm going to be fine. If I hold it for an hour, my arm's going to hurt a little, right? If I hold it all day, you'll be calling an ambulance. I mean, seriously, right? Because whether I hold it for a minute, an hour, or a day, it doesn't really matter because the weight will not change. But the longer I hold it, the heavier it becomes. If we carry our stresses, our burdens all the time, sooner or later, we will not be able to carry on. The burden gets increasingly heavier. What we have to do is to learn to put the glass down, right? To put the glass down. And we have to rest for a while before holding the glass again. We have to put down our burdens, our stressors, periodically so we can be refreshed and able to carry on. Resting, my friends, is critical. Can we depend on ourselves to stop and rest? Are we totally reliable for our own self-care? Well, there might be more to self-care than the assumption that the power for healing and rest lies solely within our own selves, that we are the only ones who have the power to care for ourselves. How many of you have heard of the 12-step program, right? The 12-step program in Alcoholics Anonymous is the backbone of that organization. And since it began, really, the program is rooted in the belief that God is the one who guides us and helps us in caring for ourselves. Let's listen to the 12 steps. One, we admitted we were powerless over alcohol, that our lives had become unmanageable. Two, we came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. Three, made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understood him. Four, made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. Five, admitted to God, to ourselves, and to another human being the exact nature of our wrongs. Six, we were entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. Seven, humbly we asked God to remove our shortcomings. Eight, made a list of all persons we'd harmed and became willing to make amends to them all. Nine, made direct amends to such people wherever possible, except when to do so would injure them or others. 10, continued to take personal inventory and when we were wrong, promptly admitted it. 11, 
sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God as we understood him, praying only for knowledge of his will for us and the power to carry that out. 12. Having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps, we tried to carry this message on and to practice these principles in all of our affairs. The 12 step program relies not just on a soul person's ability to climb out of the hole of addiction, but on God too. But what if what you are climbing out of is stress or anxiety or extreme life circumstances and not an addiction? Or, or that you need more self-care because you've gotten into a habit where taking care of yourself comes last on your list instead of first. Why would we turn to God to help like the 12-steppers do? I mean, in a case of addiction, we get it, but self-care, regular self-care, can't we just rely on ourselves? No. Not really. Because we need to turn to God because it is what God promoted and Jesus practiced. They created the original formula. The time of rest and renewal is not new to God. God values and commands rest. Exodus 34:21. Six days you shall work, on the seventh day you shall rest. In plowing time and in harvest you shall rest. Hebrews 4, 3 to 4. For only we who believe God can enter into his place of rest. We know he is ready and waiting because it is written that God rested on the seventh day of creation, having finished all that he had planned to make. And God demanded care for our physical bodies. Here's one example in the many of Old, in the Old Testament. Exodus 22, 26, 27. If you take his clothing as a pledge of repayment, you must let him have it back at night, for it's probably his only warmth. How can he sleep without it? If you, don't, if you don't return it, and he cries to me for help, I will hear and be very gracious to him at your expense, for I am very compassionate. Turning to Jesus' examples, when faced with great crowds, Jesus often did what? He withdrew, right? He went away to do what? pray. To pray. It's right. To pray. Yes. And he cared about his disciples taking care of themselves as well. Listen to Mark 6 31. Then Jesus suggested let's get away from the crowds for a while and rest. For so many people were coming and, and going that they scarcely had time to eat. God and his son have set us many examples to follow and the Bible is full of instruction on self-care in the Old Testament and Paul's letters and the Gospels. It's everywhere. These passages just confirm what we already knew. We must recognize that we cannot live self-sufficiently without God's help and through acknowledging God's great love for us. When we turn to God, then we can acknowledge a deep love for ourselves, which helps us intentionally then care for our physical and mental health. In the passage we heard today, Jesus tells us that the greatest commandment of all time is to love the Lord God with all your heart, with all your soul and mind and strength. How can we do that? How can we love God with our soul, mind, and strength if we have done this for too long? We get tired, friends, don't we? We just get tired. We would have nothing else to give. We'd be too exhausted. Now, ultimately, the self-care movement makes helpful suggestions, but a few empty promises. We may change our personal habits, but we can't always change our circumstances. And what's more, the gospel submits that the biggest problem lies not even within our circumstances, but within ourselves. What we really need is a deeper and greater source of life joy and peace, one that exists outside of ourselves. That joy and peace comes in the form of our Lord and Savior. And today, you've seen an example in the cup and the water, and you now know that God asks us to not hold that cup, our stress, for too long without putting it down. Friends, did you notice in your bulletin today there's a card? There's a card, okay? So today, to help us practice removing our stressors so we can love God with our heart, soul, mind, and strength, we're going to write two things on this card. Friends at home, friends at home, you may privately email me at pastor.bigcovechurch at gmail.com or write two things right now in the chat line during the video. Now here are the two things you're going to write down. Any stress you want to hand over. Any stress. 
hand it over, write it down. Any stress you're feeling burdened with right now, my elders and I will pray over them this week for you, okay? And number two is any spiritual practice that you'll take this week to help you with that stress. And that could be walking or praying or eating more healthy or going to the doctors, asking for help, whatever you think it could be. You don't need to write your name on it unless you want to. And then during offering time, we're going to put the cards in the box in the back with the offering and we'll collect them. And the elders and I will pray over them. At home, friends, just type it in. Friends, God has called us like Moses to ask for help, to use the tools around us to the best we can be to serve God. And, and God's love for us circumcedes all circumstances, everything. And if you feel lost, and worried and it's hard for you right now to take care of yourself, know that God is there with you and we are here as your brothers and sisters in Christ to help you carry that water glass and to help you learn to put it down. Let us pray. God, we ask you to be with us as we enter into a journey of self-care. We know that you love us deeply, God, that we are your children and we're made in your image. There are times when that hamster wheel gets so large and we spin and spin forgetting to take care of ourselves so we can serve you to the best of our ability. Help us to care for ourselves, love ourselves, to put down the water glass and depend on you to guide us and carry us when the going gets tough. We love you, Lord. Amen. Now comes a time in our service, friends at home, when we offer prayers to God. You're welcome to offer your prayers. We want to hear your prayers. Please type them in right there. We are there to hear that. And also, um, if you don't get a response right away, just type to me in a, an email, pastor.bigcovechurch at gmail.com, pastor.bigcovechurch at gmail.com. Everyone in the room has given their prayers. Let's all lift them up to God. Shall we do that? God, we thank you for this time together, for helping us to remember how to take care of ourselves, oh God, and not to just rely on our own selves to do that, but to turn to you, particularly, Lord, when we hold the glass for too long. You tell us that we need to put our stressors down. You tell us all the time through your word that we need to care for ourselves, to go away and pray, to rest. But it's hard when the world around us is spinning a mile a minute, when we can get anything, any news, anything we want at our fingertips like this, oh God. We can communicate like this. And sometimes that causes us to be actually in more stress. So we ask you to help us as we move towards caring for ourselves. And speaking of taking care, Lord, we ask that you cover the families in Texas that have suffered tremendous loss, including the family of the killer, oh God. We ask that you cover them with a blanket of your love and your comfort, particularly also the family that also lost the dad four days later of a heart attack after he found his wife had gone. Lord, we are, they are in our prayers. They are, they are always being lifted up, as are the families, of course, from New York as well, oh God. We don't know what's happening in our world right now. We understand that mental health can be the root of a lot of this, oh God. And we ask that you help us to deal with that. Help us to find the root. Help us as a Christian community to go to the source, to start with the children. The children that are alone, the children that are latchkey kids, the children that don't have both parents, the children that have never sat at a table to have a real meal where families talk around it and you share your life stories and your cares and your worries and your hurts. We lift that up to you, oh God, to help us find a way to take care of that. We are thankful for 29 years of marriage. We're thankful for birthdays, oh God, absolutely. And we ask that you cover a mirage of boo-boos that have happened to the children this last week. That you cover them with your care and comfort and wrap the kids in bubble wrap so that they stay safe. And speaking of children, God, we also ask you to keep our children safe as they travel. We're thinking of Jimmy's granddaughter in New York and many others as they travel and set foot in places they're not familiar or just being in places, in, in, in fact, sometimes in their own schools. Please wrap our children in safety. Lord, we lift up several people to you today. We lift up Anne and Bob and Brian and Tennant and Diane 
and Betty and Dr. Sandy and Bob and Wanda and Janie and Neil and Don and Shirley and Ann and Bailey and Janie and Laura and Grover and Buddy. Lord, we lift up to um, this weekend, this special weekend, our military servicemen and women and we lift up the families that have suffered loss, particularly recent loss, oh God, as it is so hard to find that your place at the table is empty, particularly when they've done and, and they've given their service to our country, oh Lord. It is so very hard. So we ask you to be with us and keep us, and we're thankful for your Son who taught us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen we're called to love and follow god with all our being we're also called by god to care for others we can do this because we have learned how to put on our oxygen masks first, enabling us to come to the aid of others as strong, more resilient Christians. At the back of the room, there is a box for our offerings and a box for the Presbyterian Home for Children. For you at home, uh, if you feel led by the Spirit to contribute to the mission and vision of Big Co Presbyterian Church, please go to our website at www.bigcovechurch.org. Now let us share our gifts. We thank you today for giving us the opportunity to care for our brothers and sisters in Christ in the Big Cove neighborhood. The monies and time and talents uh, you ha that have been given today are an example of how your love in our kingdom, in your kingdom, is spreading. Thank you, God, for all your many blessings. Amen. 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 It is our talking today, all the talking we did today about um, Jesus. Jesus is with us all the time and constantly. What a friend we have in Jesus. Here we go.
crown thy good from brotherhood, from sea to shining sea. Right now, our nation is in chaos. We don't feel the brotherhood we should. This song helps to remind us that we all are one in Christ. We are all one brother and sister in this country. And having the divisions just isn't what God wants. God calls us together as people made in his image to love one another with all of our, with all of our strength. Love God and love each other. Because we can love our neighbor if we can love our God. Go now, friends, knowing that God loves you and you hold the light of Christ in you. Wherever you go, shine his light. Amen. Amen.